10 likes, 84 people watching, 10 likes. Hit that like button, please, everybody. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit um, tonight, how hitting the like button really does help the stream. You're really helping us out just by hitting the like button. If you notice, if you go to my, my website, gordondimmick.com, underneath, there's actually a um, recommended viewing that I've linked into my uh, website. Not only do I make sure that I like the videos from independent media, not just independent media as well, but also make sure I like videos from RT as well and give them a boost. Up. Any, any, basically anything that's worthy of a like, make sure you like it. And the reason I do that and stream it to my website, so you go to the recommended viewing, you can see all the likes that I've liked, you know, all the sort of the playlist of likes. But it also, you know, it gives them a single, a single boost because not everybody can spare, you know, five pound a month, whatever it is, to support us. Not everybody can spare us money monetarily. We understand that totally. But sharing our stuff and liking it and telling YouTube, look, these people are really good. Look, look at their algorithm. Look at their algorithm. Look at the likes to dislikes where I share. My likes to dislikes are off the charts, and I do not cater to my audience. I, you, you people know that, my regular listeners. I often say things that my, the, the bulk of my audience at one stage were very, very unhappy with, um, that, that went against the, the views of the bulk of my, my audience. But I did it because it was the right thing to do, and it was the truth, and you're about to see I was vindicated in doing that tonight. So, just really like that stream. We're just trying to be honest and give you the honest truth. I'm not here. I'm not here to say controversial things just because they're controversial and get me likes and clicks. I'm not doing that. Other people do that. On the, both on the left and the right, the supposed left and right. Anyway, you know, I don't like dividing people like that, but that's you know the way people speak. They do that. They do things for clicks. They do it for likes. They do it for exposure. They do it just to. You know, be controversial. Look at look at the Molo Yiannopoulos. Look at you know other people as well. Um, I don't need to reel off these names. We're not doing that. I, at least I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not necessarily writing clickbaity your baity headlines. I try and step away from that as much as possible. I'm trying to give you honesty here and the facts. And we're getting suppressed massively. And I want to show you an exam example of. Just how badly we're getting suppressed. I'm going to show you an example of that right now, if I can, with the setup that I've got at the moment. I want to, I want to ask you, regular subscribers will remember this. Do you remember this video I did? Sorry, everything's back to front over here. So do you remember this video I did? That's really cool. I can point at it, and it looks like I'm pointing at it. Mainstream media YouTube views doubled after ad rule changes. This is a video I did back in 30th of October 2018. I showed a load of um, a load of stuff to back this up. A load of evidence. Here's um, here's some of it. Let me just move it over to the other screen. So here's some of it. You can see here. Oh, this is CNN's views, daily subs gained for, uh, for CNN. And you can see there, can you see that line where it says, from where it says January 2018, just sort of above me there. You can see there's a large uptick in daily subscribers gained for CNN on YouTube. Total subscribers, can you see that massive up curve there? Again, just in January, 28, uh, January 18 there. Look at the uptick. So it doubled. Now this is what that video that I, I put out in October 2018 um, was about. Here's Fox News. Oops. Here's Fox News. Daily subs gain. Look, January uh, 2018, uh, 2018 again. You can see massive uptick. Uptick there, massive uptick in subscribers. You can see down here. Look at this one here, this graph. Average views per day per month, January 2018. With Fox, they doubled. With CNN, they doubled. With MSNBC, they almost tripled overnight. 
Here is MSNBC. They almost tripled as of 28, January 2018, which is just below, there you go, just above my head, January 2018. See there, look at the average views, how they, how they, uh, the massive uptick. Now this is, <coughs> there's CNNs again. There was a massive uptick in 2018. I went through it in that video that I did. Um, so yeah, at the beginning of 2018, there was a big uptick in the views for CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News over in America. Now, I haven't looked at it over here, but I'm suspecting it's going to be the same, and I will have to do that when I get a chance to do it. Fortunately, I didn't have a chance to do it for this video tonight. Like I say, I've been really busy, but just as an example, here's, just as a reference, rather, here's the views for Secular Talk did that in this video as well you can see there there's no massive uptick since January 2018 no massive uptick at all but 2018 the big three you know the authoritative news uh, news I mean this is a guy who I mean supposedly is a centrist Sargon of Akkad he didn't see any upticks at all he didn't see any massive increase in his YouTube viewers at the beginning of 2018 um, here's Jimmy Dore See, I mean, this is the most popular, probably, YouTuber in news and politics in this period. I mean, he's got massive bumps from his appearances on Joe Rogan and all the great work he does. But again, no massive uptick since January 2018. It was just the news sites. There's a guy on the right, supposedly on the right. He saw no massive uptick either, called Joseph Watson. So I, I really looked at that research, uh, I really looked into that. I'm going to do it for the UK news as well, but I, I suspect it's the, going to be the same. But again, the reason I didn't do it with the UK is because I had no frame of reference other than myself, and I haven't been going long enough, to, you see what I mean, to be able to do uh, the comparison that I can with Secular Talk and Jimmy Dore, etc. I, I dare say, um, when I look at the statistics, Channel 4, BBC, etc., they had the same increase as well. Now I asked YouTube about this, I made a point of it, I made a point on that video asking you to ask YouTube about it as well, and many of you did. Um, I wrote, I emailed, I tagged them on Twitter and a lot of you did the same thing and they ignored every question I asked. And you know, I even got comments from people saying you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well here's the thing, other people started asking questions recently too. Here's a uh, switch over to it. Here's a tab for, that I've got from uh, the 7th of September. It's either the 7th of September or the 9th of July, depending on how they do, <laughs> whether it's the UK or, or American. YouTube algorithm seems to be recommending mainstream news more often and independent less, he's noticed. And that was from 2018 as well. You can see here, though, I'm not going to read them out, but you can get the gist. Loads of other people are starting to ask the same thing you see there, there's like, you can open kind the of tab there, more and more and more. Then this guy <coughs> links through to, so this is the YouTube official blog where it's actually, they've come out and not just, not just admitted it, but I'm actually outright blagging, uh, bragging about it. You can see here, here's the timeline for what they're doing. The key products and policy launches to raise authoritative voices and reduce the spread of borderline content since 2015. YouTube are bragging about what they've done here. They're bragging about suppressing people like me who have told you the truth and been right about things over and over and over again. For the majority, I'm not saying I'm right about everything, nobody can be. But I would say a good high percentage of the time I am right, especially about news items and important news issues. And I'm also right about things that the mainstream media and these, the, the, these media outlets that YouTube are boosting up have been consistently wrong on. I suggest that they must be doing it on purpose because they're wrong on matters with regards to Russiagate over and over again. They've been wrong on matters with regards to Jamie Corbyn over and over and over again. They've been wrong. You see my point. They're boosting companies that are giving you propaganda. That's what they mean by authoritative voices. 
They're raising propaganda ahead of people like me who are giving you the truth and saying, no, we've got to crucify people like Gordon. We've got to limit his boy, a voice. We've got to restrict his reach. They say, they say hey, I saw a recent ADL speech with um, Tasha Baron Cohen, of, of all people. I wanted to put it in my live stream tonight. I didn't have a chance where he was saying there's freedom of speech, but there's not freedom of reach. They are suppressing us. They are saying that they are doing it because a few of us will do those clickbaity headlines and will do those, will say controversial things because they know it gets clicks and it gets likes and it gets talked about and, it, and controversial things get talked about nonstop. They are saying that they're quashing their voices. And they're having to suppress voices like me because of those, whilst raising, at the same time, CNN, MSNBC and Fox, which lie to you on a daily basis, on purpose. Look at my reporting on Syria compared to theirs. Look at my reporting on Venezuela compared to theirs. Look at my reporting on Russia, Gates, on, 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 on it all. I just try and give you the truth. I have a bias, yes. But you're well aware of that. But I'm still trying to give you the truth. I'm not cheering on one side or the other here. To my detriment sometimes. But you see here. This is, look at that. 2019, this is just what they've done. January 25th. Reduced recommendations of borderline content and videos that could misinform people in a harmful ways in the United States. That was the beginning of 2019. There's the rollout beginning of 2018. Launched information panels alongside videos from government or public. And this has all been happening. This is why that you've seen that massive uptick in video views for CNN, MSNBC and Fox as people go, what's going on in the world? And they've all gone to those authoritative sites, those propaganda outlets, away from people like me who are not funded by Raytheon and Boeing and Lockheed Martin, but funded by you. You pay me your wages, my wages, the vast amount of it, 90% plus I suggest, you do. YouTube don't, perhaps that's why. If I made them money, maybe they would, you know, let me go in, you see what I mean? It's. You, you, what, you, what happens, I just want to expand on this a little bit because what happens is, what you're going to do is, you, you're, you're nudging people into the right direction again, you know? You, you're trying to, they're trying to, it, they're trying to change your behaviour. They're trying to change our behaviour because all of a sudden we're not making content that, that is the best it can be for you, we're making content that's the best it can be for the algorithm. And that's not truthful. That's propaganda, and that's bullshit, and that's what we're trying to get away from. It's what you come to me for, and people like me. I want to talk about this a little more, because raising authoritative voices on YouTube. I want to read this out. More and more people, he says, turn to YouTube to catch up on the latest news or simply learn about the topics they're curious about, whether it's climate change or natural disaster. The topics like music or entertainment, relevance, newsness or popularity are most helpful to understand what people are interested in. But for subjects such as news, science and historical events, where accuracy and authoritativeness are the key, the quality of information and context matters most, much more than the engagement. That's why we've redoubled our efforts to raise authoritative sources, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, just as I told you about a year ago, To the top and introduce a suite of features to tackle this challenge holistically. Elevating authoritative sources in our systems. Like I say, they're bragging about crushing independent voices like me. I haven't, look at my subscriber count. It's been stuck on 18,500 since Julian Assange sent me a letter back in June. Julian Assange sent me a letter back in June. And I've been stuck on 18,500 subscribers ever since. Now I thought it was because, you know, Julian Assange sent me a letter. It, could, it possibly could be. But it could, also, it could also just possibly be this. 
You can just be really hit hard by an algorithm change. It's got nothing to do with Julian Assange. But one thing's for sure, something's up. I shouldn't be stalling. Elevating authoritative sources in our systems. Since 2000, in 2017, it says so, we started to prioritize authoritative voices. This is adpocalypse. This is running at the same time as adpocalypse. It's in conjunction with it. This was the aim all along. This is why the Wall Street Journal, as I reported, etc., attacked these, you know, jihadi websites, etc., on YouTube that were running bad content because they knew they could use this to squeeze us, and to squeeze the truth. We started to prioritize authoritative voices, including news sources like CNN, Fox News, Joe and Pan, India Today, and The Guardian. CNN who have got Russiagate over and over and over and over, wrong over and over again. CNN, who I debunk one of their stories about Venezuela um, trucks on fire. And then the debunked story that I and many others in independent media report on appears in the New York Times 10 days later. It takes 10 the New York Times 10 days longer than me to debunk an obviously false story from fake news CNN. Yet, that gets raised as an authoritative voice. Come on now, this isn't fair. This is, this is not just my livelihood we're talking about, this is doing the exact opposite of what social media was supposed to fucking do. Social media was supposed to connect people to different sources of information, connect people. It was meant to be the information age. Now you're trying to restrict the information. The Guardian, who publish fake news, they publish it about the Manafort meeting Assange in the embassy. And still to that day, it's up. Edited multiple, multiple times without any edit on it. Edited in stealth, they call it, yet they elevate the Guardian. GCHQ's mouthpiece. They elevate propaganda. That's what they're doing. It's not authoritative sources, it's propaganda. They're shoving it down your throats. For news and information queries in search results and watch next panels. Let's say you're looking for a le to learn more about a newsworthy event. For example, try searching Brexit. While there will, will, uh, while there will be a slight variation, on average, 93% of the videos in global top 10 results. In other words, 10 out of 10, 93 times out of 100. <sighs> Come from, that's it, the way they fuck about with figures to make it seem less bad. 93% in the global, nine, yeah, 93 times out of 100, 10 out of the 10 results, the ones that everybody click on, they'll all be propaganda. Don't worry guys, we got your back. Out of every 1,000 search results, 930 of them, propaganda. That's what we're going to shove down your throats. This is what YouTube is saying. Go, when they say there, try searching Bre Brexit, well... Brexit, while there'll be a slight variation, try searching Skripals. Who do you think is going to give you the truth about the Skripal poisonings? The BBC or me? Which one of the two of us is more authoritative on the Skripal poisonings, do you think? Which one of the two of us is going to lie to you and give you bullshit and propaganda? I digress. Authoritativeness, propaganda, is also important for evergreen topics prone to misinformation, lies, propaganda, such as videos about vaccines. In these cases, we aim to surface videos from experts like public health institutions. In search results, millions of search queries are getting this treatment today, and we're continually expanding more to more topics, uh, topics and countries. Well, I just showed you, Jimmy Dore didn't get a, a bump in his search figures in January 2018, and he brings on experts all over the place. He's had Bill, Bill Binney, that's a 19-year 19 19 year or 39-year veteran of, of the NSA. 
Authoritative. Propaganda. That's what it means. Independent media on YouTube, on social media, is getting squeezed like a boa constrictor at the moment with YouTube. You've just seen the timeline there I've showed you. The YouTube are bragging about now. Every month or every couple of weeks, every couple of months, the news gets squeezed a little bit tighter. In a couple of months, another algorithm tweak comes out and gets squeezed a little bit tighter. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And that's what they're doing. They're going to squeeze us out of existence. We have to stop this. It's going to take all of us to do it. Please, support independent media. I have recently started a bit shoot channel called Unrigital. You can find me on there as well, and I'm uploading all my videos over there. Support independent media. Make all world fiction again.